Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're looking at Donna Gail Manson and she went missing in 1974 in Olympia, Washington. Now I'm going to show you this Jane Doe before I read up on her. And I want you to see this Jane Doe is from Eatonville, Pierce, Washington, 1976. Wait a minute. Yeah, this is it. 1976 to 1978 and a lot of people believe that this is her <clears throat> she had blonde um, brown hair with blonde highlights 13 to 17 inches long and i don't know if she dyed her hair with blonde highlights but she made of 15 to 20 years old it says she's five foot seven this says she's five foot tall so for me to believe that this is her i would have to either believe that whoever said she's five foot seven was wrong or there was a typo or whoever said she was five foot tall is wrong or there was some sort of typo so that's the information that i would need in order to think that this might even be her because there's speculation that the remains belong to her but I don't understand because it says that this person is five foot seven. So this says she's five foot tall. And then when you go to read further, it says she was a student at Evergreen State College in Olympia, Washington. Here, I'm going to read it from the other one because I like the other one better. This one, it says this is the Doe Network and you can donate and help places like this and the Charlie Project. Anyway, it says she was a student at Evergreen State College, Olympia, 1978. March 12, 1974, she was last seen 7 p.m. by college roommate whom Manson told she was going to attend a jazz concert being held on the campus. She was reportedly last seen between the dorms and the library on the way to the concert. Manson did not indicate she planned to leave campus and supposedly all of her person belongings were still in her room. Ted Bundy confessed on death bed on death row to abducting Manson from Olympia campus. Now, if the more he confesses, the more famous he gets as far as I'm concerned. So I don't know if I believe him because some people believe that he was a pathological liar. So, and he was a murderer, so he could have been. However, Bundy never specifically said where her remains might be found. First, he said she was in one place and she said he said she was in another then he said she was in another and then he claimed that he burned her skull down to the last ash in a fireplace so i don't know and now and then they say there had been signs about of him around campus and with a cast on and things like that which there may have been but i don't know um, it seems to me like if he killed her, he'd know where her remains were. And then it says on August 29th, 1979, is that when the other one was found? August 29th, this says 1978. Is that the right one? Why does it say 1979? Two fishermen came upon a human skull. While walking in the foothills of Mount Rainier, southwest of Eatonville, searchers come the area and located human bones, hairs, and multicolored shirt, which became a key to a piece of evidence. Manson was said to be wearing a similar shirt when she was last seen. Hold on. Striped shirt. Okay. I don't know why this says 1979 and this says 1978. So maybe it was a typo. Anyway, so it's so an investigation and they ruled out a bunch of people, eight possible identities for the skeleton, and they didn't rule out hers. So they're thinking that it might be her, but like I said, she's five foot tall, according to this. So 
Um, if I go to look around at other does, there's this one, and this one died between November 29th and December 1st, 1974, and she went missing in March, okay? Um, this is south of Santa Fe, New Mexico, recognizable face, 14 to 19 years old, and why is that not scrolling down? And she was 19 years old, so 14 to 19 years old. Five foot two estimated, light brown, maybe reddish blonde hair, blue hazel eyes, well groomed, strangled to death. The victim was located south of Santa Fe, New Mexico. The body was just off the highway, found by a Colorado couple picking pinion nuts. So this is how far away that this body was found. And so, honestly, I would think this was her before I would think this was her, even though this one's so much closer because of the height and things like that, even though the timing and the distance is so far. Now, let's look at some more Jane Doe's. Um, we have this Jane Doe, and there's photos of what she might have looked like. And if you go to NamUs, they also have this photo right here of what she might have looked like as well. So, and then I look at this photo, and I look at her, and I look at that photo, and I look at her, and I'm not sure, but it says 18 to 40 years old. This is Lynn County, Oregon, 1966 to 1976, yeah, 1974, 4 foot 11 to 5 foot 1. 18 to 40 years old so you know and I don't know if it would be her or not but there's this Jane Doe as well that could have been her and then we have this Jane Doe and it she it only says 14 to 18 years old and she was 19 years old and it says years prior in 1978 Williams Oregon and I look at their image here and then I'll go look at her image now go back and look at this image whoops wrong image <laughs> oh I'm gonna drag this over here so I see this image and now I'll look at her image now I'll go back and look at that image and then I'll go back to look at her image to see the shape of the face and all of that so they're not recognizable, but that's their renderings. I don't know how they do it. I don't know if that's how the victim might have actually looked. But, you know, sometimes they do really well. And other times I'm not sure because I don't know what they have to use. So there's this Jane Doe. And she was found in Oregon. And I don't know if it was Ted Bundy or if it was... The other serial killer, um, I don't know, one of them moved bones and parts to Oregon to try to confuse people. And there was a few serial killers then, and I don't know why the name slips my mind right now. Then we have this Jane Doe right here, and even though it looks like she has blonde hair in the picture, it says her hair was... Race unknown, female, five foot one to five foot four, light brown, sandy, or blonde hair. So she may have had light brown hair. So I'm going to drag this over here. And we can look at this and look at that. And so I don't know because I'm looking at the shape of the hair, not the color. Anyway, and I don't know if there was hair on the body, but or on the skeleton. So, or near the body or whatever. Anyway, this one said she was pregnant. And likely in her 6th to 8th month of pregnancy. So. And then we have this one. And this is one of the Lynn County ones. And there is a girl that went missing. That was hitchhiking and got a ride. And her belongings were found in Lynn County, Oregon. So I'm 
believe that one of the Jane Does in Lynn County would be that one girl whose belongings were found there. I think there's like three bodies that were found in Lynn County. Then we have this one in Olympia, Washington. So, and where did she go missing from? Olympia, Washington. Hold the phone. So she went missing in Olympia, Washington, 1974. This Jane is from Olympia, Washington, 1969 to 1979. Discovered in 1981. Age 20 to 30 years old. Height and weight unknown. Somebody made a crude cross made of sticks and shoelace was found near the area of the remains. So then it makes you think, you know, what if he didn't kill her? What if she was, what if something happened to her and it was someone that she knew? Or maybe somebody didn't mean to kill her. And it happened on the campus. So they took her and they buried her. And I don't know if that's her, but like I said, she went missing in Olympia, Washington. And this Jane Doe was found in Olympia, Washington. So... And I don't know, there's so many Jane Doe's that could be her. And and that's what's interesting. Because who do you think is more likely to be her? And I did a search on NamUs trying to find someone that could be her. And this is the one that came up. So then I went and did my own little pan search through the Doe Network and places like that. And a list I have. And came up with these other ones. So... I don't know why they didn't come up on the search I was doing, but so you have to decide, you know, if you were, if you were an investigator, which I'm not, and you were trying to find her remains, who would you think was her? Would you think that this person that's five foot seven was her? Would you think this person that was found all the way in New Mexico might be her? Would you think that this might be her, even though it says up to 18 years old that was found in Oregon? Um, would you think this might be her because of this photograph? And there's a 10-year span, so it could be almost anybody. They had a lot of people that went missing that was 4 foot 11 to 5 foot 1 during that time span. So, you know, it might be, it could be her. Or do you think that... This could be her because that's right there in the same city that she went missing in. So, you know, you're going to try to get rid of a body in a hurry. If you've, if, you know, you might try to put this body in the same city that you're in rather quickly and go back to what you were doing so you don't get caught, right? Depending on who you are, who commits a crime. Or do you think this might be her in Oregon? Or the one in the ones in Lynn County, Oregon. Wow. That's shocking. I had all these up here and I didn't even realize that this one was in the same city that she's in before I went to do this video. I didn't even realize. I just pulled out the ones that I thought could be her and I was like, wow, this one is in Olympia. But there's a 10-year span that it could be from. And there was a serial killer that was moving different bones around. But And I always look at this and think, wow, who could this be, you know? Because this could be one of those people that worked at the in Seattle at the airport, you know, whose loved ones needed a place to bury them. Maybe they cared about them when they killed them and they took them to bury them. But they weren't, I don't think they were really buried. They might have been buried and dug up or washed up because there were, Bone fragments discovered at a dumping site in the woods and a crude cross made. So, age 20 to 30 years old. You know, now I'm sitting here thinking, well, I wonder if this could be her. Because, why wouldn't it be her? She went missing in Olympia and this one was found in Olympia. So, leave your comments. Let me know. There's a lot of different Jane Doe's that easily could be her. Easily could be her. But which one do you think it would be? And which one would you check first if you were 
um, in law enforcement, which I'm not, but, you know, I'm curious to know which one, you know, I'm, I'm an individual at home just doing this, like you're an individual at home, maybe, I don't know if you are not, just watching this, let me know what your opinion is, and don't forget to pray for her family and her loved ones, and the investigators, and all the different people's families in each of these cases, and if you have information about her, or about who might have killed her, maybe somebody was drunk over the years and talking, and then they said they were just making it up or whatever, and you think it might help them solve the case. You're not sure if it's true. You're not sure if it's relevant. You'd think maybe it's even hearsay. You know, contact the authorities. And this might not be the right email because it's probably not the same detective, but you can call the different numbers to get the emails. You can um, CC a couple of them in the email to make sure that different, and ask them to forward it so somebody gets it. And let them have that information. Let them decide if it's relevant. Let them decide if it's important and see if they can decide if it will help their case or not. Then you have that burden off of your shoulders. And the burden is on them. And that's where the burden should be. It shouldn't be on an individual. It should be on the people working the case. And they should have that information. And if you have that information about any other cases, you should let them know. And like I said, don't forget to stop and pray for all these people that have been scarred by this. Including the investigators. Because you imagine how, how this would scar their lives and the nightmares they would have. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. And have a great day. Bye-bye.